Hello and welcome to Fifth Gear. Today I'm in the Italian Alps getting to grips with every petrolhead's dream. A brand new Ferrari. And even by their exotic standards, this new FF is astonishing. It's like no Ferrari that's ever gone before. It is glorious. Also, Vicky pits BMW against Jaguar at our brand new shootout track in the Netherlands. And Jason feels the force of 8,000 horsepower as he goes drag racing in Abu Dhabi. And now it's time to play in Ferrari's radical new supercar. Forget everything you know about Ferrari. They may as well have beamed this down from another planet. Take a look at the front, and it's got Ferrari written all over it. But take a look at the back, and you discover Ferrari have built an estate car. Can you believe it? This £230,000 machine has four seats and a bigger boot than a Ford Focus. They call it the FF. So that's one F for four seats, but the biggest surprise is another F for four-wheel drive. It's their first ever four-wheel drive production car and has been made simply because their customers asked for it. Apparently, their clientele were fed up of having to take the four-wheel drive Bentley or Lamborghini to the skiing resort and they really wanted to take a Ferrari. My biggest concern with this new FF is that the four-wheel drive would ruin the classic Ferrari handling because almost inevitably it tends to put a bit more understeer to a car. Also, it puts more weight over the front axle, which a front-edge of Ferrari doesn't want. Ferrari have gone to extraordinary lengths to avoid this problem, inventing their own bespoke four-wheel drive system that adds just 30 kilograms to the car's weight. You've still got classic Ferrari handling, sharp turning and great acceleration out of corners with good traction. It is glorious. As much as I love getting a car sideways, Ferrari's customers wanted all-round grip. And that's what they've got. Even round the endless hairpin corners of the Italian Alps, the FF stayed planted. So, on the way to the skiing resort, the FF drives impeccably. But what happens when you finally get there and the roads are covered in snow? To find out, the Ferrari was taken to the top of the mountain, quickly. Welcome to Fifth Gear on ice. With no studs in our tyres, this could be an accident waiting to happen. This is sheet snow and ice. I've got it in snow mode at the moment. But the car doesn't feel like it's been held back. I just feel like I'm the most brilliant driver in the world. But here's the amazing thing. I can now actually switch from snow mode into sport mode. And now all the engine power starts firing up. The handling becomes more exciting, and yet still the car knows it's on snow and ice. So it still stops me bombing straight off the road, but gives me a much more sporting performance. And it sounds like a Ferrari. I can't believe I'm driving a quarter of a million pound Ferrari on sheet ice and snow. Grip, grip, grip. Unbelievable. There you have it, a Ferrari that can go anywhere. Oh, I want one of these. I want one. And to see bonus footage of me hooning the FF across the Alps, head to the videos section of our website, channel5.com forward slash fifth gear. 
Next, it's time for the team test, where all four of us get together to give the definitive verdict on an important new car. Today, we're testing the brand new Nissan Micra Super Mini. As it's going on sale in 160 countries across the globe, it needs to be brilliant. I was a big fan of the old Nissan Micra. When I was on magazines, it used to win quite a lot of group tests. So I was quite looking forward to this new one. Oh, dear. But I was bitterly disappointed. This one is really bad. Do you know what? I've, they, I, I'm upset because the previous Micra was actually quite a neat little car, and it was cooler than the Fiat 500. To start with, I think it looks pretty ugly. Look at the size of everything. Look at the size of the fuel filler flat. It's just a car for people with bad eyesight. It's Lego Duplo everywhere I look. <sighs> it's a turd of a car. It's um, it's 12 grand's worth of nonsense. I hate it. Yes. He's done, a, he's done a Reginald Perry and he'll help no, you sometime. We've got to drive it. No. We have to drive it. No. <laughs> Inside, there were no redeeming features. You know where they've got this from? What? Fisher Price. It's just all this plastic. Oh, no. all it's this grey, so. I, I didn't know you were allowed to make cars like this. The interior lost any little funky spark that it used to have. Look, I'm nearly on the ceiling. My seat won't go down. And how tall are you, Tiff? Six foot. Not six foot exactly. Are you sure? I was six foot one and a half when I was younger. I had a go of the car earlier in the day. I liked the three cylinder engine, but the way in which you change gears with it, it was horrendous. It knocked your gearbox. It felt like I was shifting cogs with an old person's limb. Maybe it's a brilliant kind of drive. Who knows? It may no, be it'll be horrible. It'll be horrible. Oh, look at all that power. It sounds awesome, though. I was looking forward to having a test drive with Tiff. It's nice, it's light. You feel it's airy. It's, it is spacious. But actually, I didn't expect him to, to, to do what he did. Are you taking this seriously? Of course I'm out. And we're spinning round, we're smoking the tyres, we're smoking the clutch. The clutch is having a very, very naughty time. And it's understeering like no car I've been in for a very long time. Let's try higher speed cornering. Oh, my goodness. The understeer builds up a bit now. Yes. Six, a bit you're on full up. The poor old three-cylinder went to hell and back. Not very supportive seats, I don't think. There was so much understeer and body roll and there was axle tramp in the front. No, no, no. Well, that's the new Nissan Micra 1.2 Tecna. £12,350. I don't feel very well now, to be honest. The fact is, similarly priced rivals like the Suzuki Swift are just as economical, prettier, faster, safer and nicer to drive. And the Nissan gets a microscopic three. The Micra isn't very good. Three. So, the Nissan is a number two. I'm awarding the Micra. Which gives the poor Nissan Micra a team test score of 13 out of 40. Still to come, Vicky races two diesel powered super saloons. It is quite sporty. And Jason gets pummeled by the fastest motorsport on earth. It's just mental. Welcome back to Fifth Gear, where it's time to hand over to Vicky for the first of this series shootouts, where we take two close rivals and race them against each other to answer the simple question, which is the quickest? And we've got ourselves a rather special new track. The TT Circuit Assen is the toughest shootout arena Fifth Gear has ever been to. This legendary Dutch track is a challenging mix of the fast and the technical. Known as the Cathedral, it normally has a congregation of 160,000 cheering fans who flocked from all over the world. Today, though, it's all ours. We're going to be testing a very modern phenomenon, the sporty diesel. BMW's 535D M Sport and Jaguar's XF Diesel S. 
both have performance to keep petrol heads happy, but with fuel economy, only a diesel can provide. All I want to know is, which is quickest? We'll start with the BMW. Oh, my word. Good grief. This steering wheel is the size of a satellite dish and poorly weighted as well, actually. Oh, dear me. I'd really like a lot more feedback, actually, through the steering. I'm feeling a bit like a chauffeur, really. There's no connection between me and the track. I'm really surprised that this car is a diesel, actually, because it's pulling nicely out of the corners and it's revving up to about 5,500 RPM. Oh, understeer. Oh. And a bit of body roll. Oh, I think I'm going to feel sick. <laughs> oh, dear. But I'm not 